Hello everyone, I am Gabriel Riel and this is the Rise of Atlanta Show. Hallelujah. Today is um, April the 18th, 2018. <coughs> and the topic of the day will be about uh, strange things I have noticed in my restroom. I noticed uh, handprints on the towel that look like child size handprints. And on the the mirror, when I came out of the shower one time, I saw it fogged up, and I saw the words TV, and I saw the words um, a W. So I don't know what W means. Does it mean West Side? Does it mean World? I really don't know. It's very strange. Uh, I also saw another word, um, <coughs> minions to the top right, like saying we are minions, like, um, like, you know that movie Minions, well, they make it sound like, um, that they're just wayward souls, that's all they are, you know, I don't know if they're, like, asking God for forgiveness, or are they mocking God with that word, so it's very strange, um, <coughs> now the word minion, I wasn't able to take a picture because uh, it didn't come out too clearly. So, um, but the words TV and W came out very clear, um, and also the handprint. Now I have been seeing the handprint uh, on different towels all the time. <coughs> I must have first saw the handprint and. Once in a while, it's adult size handprint, but usually it's a child size. And um, I must have started seeing that on the towels. I'm guessing um, around since 2013, 14, around there. So it's been a while, almost four or five years. And on and off, you know. <laughs> so, um, now the word TV. I had seen that there for a while also, but not that long. Um, I must have seen the word TV, not the W, that one's kind of new. But the word that says TV, I must have seen that around maybe three, four years ago. And it's strange, because I once had a dream of um, my grandma on my mom's side, uh, she passed away when I was, I think, um, nine or ten, um, and it was weird because um, I saw her in a dream, like I think about six years ago, five or six years ago, and she was speaking. She was speaking like on the news, and she was wearing a shirt that was like glowing. And that's why I think it's interesting, because my first four videos, I had it like my shirts are very glowing big time. So, I'm not sure if it kind of means that. Um, it's very uh, interesting the way it turned out. Because um, <clears throat> uh, I plan to bring back the black lights, but I, I mean, it, it's too dark, the setting. Uh, it needs lighting. I need to find a way to incorporate, like, actual lighting, you know, um, I don't have the money for actual lighting yet, um, and to really make it look nice, something different, you know, <coughs> so I need a device of, a, a special background that can pick up, uh, that can light up, um, so that'll be the topic of the day, at least, weird, uh, head prints I've been seeing on the towels and of uh, the words TV and W on the mirror in the restroom. So it is pretty interesting and I hope more interesting uh, stuff keeps happening like that. So we'll go ahead and dive into the news now. Uh, first article is Mass Possession Grip School in Columbia. Let's see here. Mass possession. In the town of Palomio. Uh, I don't say Colombia. Uh, now, Colombia is bad. It has a lot of cocaine there. 
Um, that's where it comes from. And the Cuban cigars, but well, that's Cuba. Colombian cigars, uh, <coughs> they actually make the paper that they roll the, the cigars in with coca leaves, and that's where cocaine's come from. Can you believe it? Cocaine comes from a cocoa plant. It's crazy stuff, man, I'm telling you. Um, they'll say how many children were uh, supposedly possessed. So far, it's talking about just one victim so far, a young girl. Felt something make a sound inside her body and was knocked to the ground by a blow to the chest from an unseen force. And then the voice told the little girl, I will kill them, which no doubt only increased the terror in her um, as witnessed by everyone else. Um... Uh, the immobilized children were removed from school and given medical attention. <laughs> now local churches are going in to investigate. And, uh, pretty strange story. They need ghost hunters over there also. Ghost hunters is a very fascinating... I'm not just talking about the show. That show was awesome also. But for people to start forming ghost hunting groups, it's a very cool phenomenon, you know. <laughs> and the churches of preachers really need to um, see the revival that all these ghost hunters are doing. They're showing atheist proof, you know. I mean, I wouldn't lie. If it wasn't for the proof I've seen and heard, the EVPs and all, and knowing God is real, I would have been lining up to clone myself, you know. But now that I know the truth, now that I, I, you know, there's so much proof out there, you know, I know God is real, I would never clone myself, you know. And everyone is going to start um, protesting and legalizing human cloning soon for the false sense of eternal life. It's coming very soon. Uh, <coughs> <coughs> coughing a little bit more today because there's a lot of dust in the air. Meteorite diamonds came from lost planet. Now which planet is it saying? Uh, from an early solar system, a protoplanet, large as Mercury or Mars. And I just get to the main, main words here. <coughs> that was a lot of dust in the sky in El Paso, Texas today. I mean, nowhere nearly as bad as those um, dust storms they get in the Middle East. You know, I mean, they they fill the the horizon top to bottom. You know, and they just come in and swoop in and. They get really bad dust storms. Have you ever seen them in the Middle East? It's like like a wall of dust uh, from top to bottom. You can't even see through it. It's not light dust. It's very thick. Man. They get horrible. I wouldn't even call it a dust storm. Their whole entire cities get flooded with nothing but dust so thick you can't see anything. It turns everything dark red. It's very strange. Uh, hopefully that doesn't come to the rest of the world. I don't know why they get them. I guess they get higher winds because it's more desert and weird stuff. Um, like how they always get the locusts in the Middle East. They never have them here in America or other parts in the world because they don't travel. I mean, we probably have some locusts, but they're probably not the same. as uh, Our locusts are probably smaller. I don't know. I mean, they, the locusts there, they get like this big. It's very crazy. Um... So this, I've heard of this, a diamond asteroid. I remember <clears throat> three, four years ago after September 11th, since uh, four years after 2001, they said, uh, it might have been uh, 2002 or three, that a huge asteroid passed by Earth that was made up of entirely diamonds. Can you believe it? So imagine what that would have done to the diamond um market if it landed here in America. Or not just America, the world. But it would have had to have crashed into a desert for it to have not uh, injured anyone. Because if it would have landed in the ocean, it would have caused a tsunami. It would have been too too heavy to lift up. So 
if only that would have landed in the barren, barren desert, um, it would have completely eliminated the, the greed of diamonds. You know? It would have made it so affordable, we would have all had diamonds. Very crazy stuff. Um, so it's like they found a, a meteorite diamond came from the last planet. So I've heard about this before. I guess it's coming back again. Very, very interesting. Next story. Trump speaks out for Pastor Andrew Brunson after disturbing trial twists. Now this is a guy, I believe in Turkey, that they're persecuting him for being a Christian. Yep, Turkey. And they're calling him, <clears throat> charging him with treason and of a, being a part of a terrorist organization. And there's no proof since when it, they call Christians uh, a terrorist organization. This is what Trump said. Pastor Andrew Brunson, a fine gentleman and Christian leader in the United States, is on trial and being persecuted in Turkey for no reason. They called him a spy, but I am more a spy than he is. Hopefully he will be allowed to come home to this beautiful family where he belongs. Man, so that's pretty crazy. You know, and this guy, uh, he looks kind of Asian, so it's weird how they would be persecuting their own people. Well, people in Turkey ain't really Asian. Um, they're kind of like mixed Muslim. It's strange. Uh, very strange indeed. People in Turkey, I believe, are mixed with Muslim and uh, European blood. So they have uh, half Caucasian, half Muslim. Because uh, England is literally right next door to Turkey. So it is strange. Strange times we're in. This was weird. I haven't really heard this story yet. Brad Pitt scenario takes designer baby technology to a whole new level. So I just predicted 40 years. Within 40 years, they'll make a baby from DNA scraps. Such as those left behind from a used coffee cup. Can you believe it? It means a person can capture someone's else DNA, such as celebrities, without their knowledge, and use it to make a child and clone them. To create designer babies, super babies, you know? Um, <coughs> it's crazy, couldn't you imagine? Getting DNA from just a... Uh, Certain cells is crazy. We're working on a hundred embryos. Look, they're already starting to tinker in into um, creating designer babies, super babies. Now people say, oh, it's going to eliminate diseases and all this. But what about the negative effects this can have if they do it wrong? So you are playing with people's lives here, you know. I mean, what if the babies become deformed? Well, they want to abort at early term. And it's a mess coming, man. Truly a mess. This is the abomination of desolation like it talks about in Revelation. Because it's desolating. Because you start cloning people and it weakens the strands of human bodies. Before you know it, um, <clears throat> 500,000 years into the future, all the generations are going to be of clones and and everything's just going to be degraded, man. And the human bodies are going to be synthetic and uh, they're going to be so processed that they won't be able to uh, survive, basically. Next story, Airmen fired, demoted over dinosaur puppet video. She was holding a a puppet in her hand. As you can see the puppet in her hand. It looks like her hand, but it's a dinosaur puppet. Now I guess they're saying she's making a mockery of the military? I don't know if it, uh, They said uh, hand puppets have no place in the military or in government buildings. Well, <coughs> 
I bet uh, Jeff Dunham would uh, argue with that. Jeff Dunham's one of the coolest hand puppet um, ventriloquists where he talks like he's not moving his mouth. So, shout out Jeff Dunham. You know, um, and it's very cool how um, Fossil Perez is a UFO summoner in California. <coughs> And he works with Jeff Dunham. So it's cool to see UFO summoners getting into um, celebrity status. It's pretty awesome. Celebrity status. And we all want to work. A lot of people don't want to be celebrities, but you know, <coughs> the money <coughs> is really what's good about being a celebrity. Not really the fame, I mean, it comes with it. <coughs> But you see, I just want money so I can be financially free and use it to um, do great things with it. Not buy mansions and yachts and all that. I want to have a decent house uh, paid off. <coughs> and have money every month to pay the mortgage, you know. <coughs> if I could get a house paid off faster, I would. So it's very strange, um, very strange indeed. Uh, this is weird. Manhattan nanny found guilty in deaths of two children in her care. Now this picture of her, she looks like she's such a wacko that she's all laughing in court. Look at her here. Look at her, her grin here. Let me put this wacko on blast here. Look at her diabolical grin. Man. You can't really see her eyes too good. Look at that diabolical grin. She's laughing. She's laughing. She's not crying. She's not feeling any remorse. She's laughing. And who's she laughing at? Not just the, the victims or the family members. She's laughing at God as well, you know. <coughs> and... It makes me so angry. I could just imagine how angry it makes God. You know, so. um, she should be doomed to hell. That's where the evil people need to go. A New York nanny accused of murdering two, two, two children she was trusted to care for uh, has learned her fate in Manhattan courtroom. Yoselin Ortega was found guilty on two counts of first degree murder and two counts of second degree murder for stabbing Lucia Krim, six years old, and Leo Krim, two years old, to death in their Upper West Side home in Manhattan. In October 2012, weird how it's uh, by Halloween, in October and 2012, when the Mayans um, calendar predicted a, <coughs> not just the end of the world, a, a change in something. What change has that brought on? Well, we would become more um, atheists and mocking um, God and Jesus' return. Uh, just like after 9-11, you know, they said oh, that uh, Jesus never returning after a nuclear bomb in Japan and after 9-11. But Jesus is returning. And what's going to bring it on is uh, this supposed... Uh, World War Three that could pop off at any minute, and not just that, also um, human cloning. You know, that's the whole meat and bones of prophecy here, the mark of the beast. Now I see it like it shouldn't have to come down to where everyone's already cloning themselves and the hybrids are walking around everywhere. It shouldn't have to come down to that. See, I have this uh, belief of a preemptive strike against science for God to prevent it all from happening and get an early jump start on it and uh, to return before all that happens. We just need some way for prophecy to be fulfilled. I wish the whole world could hear of uh, Rael somehow, you know, the, the guy who says that human cloning is eternal life. I mean, if he were to pass away, I don't think the news would talk about him. So I feel that um, um, if the news could just like they need, they need to, um, 
uh, have the debate of human cloning. Um, people need to know what's going on. They need to see that this is what the whole Mark of the Beast, this is what Revelation is all about. You know? And for them to be keeping it top secret for only the men in black to know, and it just makes, they see us like sheep. They want us to be stupid, you know? They don't want us to know the truth, what's going on. And the world needs to know so that they can get ready for Jesus' return. This is that pinnacle uh, moment in time we're in here. <coughs> and, you know, this whole talk of human cloning has been festering for so long. It's been um, uh, underground for so long. And um, I've known about it for so long. And the very wise people of the earth have known about it for so long. And it seems just like there's no way to flash the message out to the world. To get everyone to get ready, you know. And for everyone to know what human cloning is and all about and hybrids and all. And, you know, I wish somehow, some way, the whole world can know about it so we can get ready for Jesus' return. There's no one global um, message to flash. You know, the only way I can think of it is by putting a, uh, an ad on the Super Bowl, you know, to expose all this, what Ray L's doing. And he says human cloning is eternal life, and like, here's the mark of the beast. And, hey, everyone, let's get ready for Jesus' return. There needs to be a commercial on the Super Bowl. But even then, it seems like it's not enough. See, it's a daunting task. It seems like I have to... Uh, tell everyone in the whole world what this is all about, what human cloning is all about. But at the same time, it says um, in the Bible when the gospel has been spread to the whole world. It has for so long, you know. <clears throat> and by telling everyone, you know, what's going on with human cloning, well, um, I mean, it's crazy, you know. Um, people um, turn from God, they become deceived, and they believe it, you know. Um <clears throat> So, I mean, I mean, the way I see it is, um, if the whole world knew about it, the more people would be falling off and, and um, becoming atheists. So, you know, it's a real um, problem because if you try to tell the whole world and then a lot of people become deceived and, and so many things, they commit suicide because they go crazy, you know, wondering what life is all about, you know. They start hearing human cloning's eternal life. They just might lose it, you know. Um, not really just panic in the streets, but um, more like um, a lot of people will start believing that lie, and they might become immoral, doing more drugs, committing more crimes, robbing more, you know. So it has a negative effect as well to try to tell everyone what human cloning for eternal life, what they're planning on doing, and. This is all the mark of the beast here. This is not to scare people. It's to scare the hell out of evil people. But to uh, give us Christians so much uh, joy and uh, proof that our Lord is returning. So, you know, <clears throat> um, sending this message out, it, it has different paths. And people take different approaches to it. So the, the way I see it is the whole 8 billion people in the world... Don't need to uh, know about it, but at the same time, I really don't know what else is would bring Jesus' return because um, a World War Three seems like it's never going to happen. Nuclear war seems like it's never going to happen, and I don't want us all to get nuked. Uh, it's already too late at that point, you know. So it really makes me wonder, you know. I mean, what's it going to take uh, for Jesus to return? I really don't know. I mean. A whole 8 billion people in the world don't need to know that human cloning is the false sense of eternal life of Jesus to return. And we don't need to uh, be all nuked uh, to smithereens for Jesus to return. So what's it going to take? You know, there's going to be a point where Jesus returns to prevent all that. So, you know, it seems like, oh, it's going to take another thousand years just for everyone to hear what human cloning is. You know, the, the scientists say they they keep doing it, doing it, but they never clone the worldly mammoth. They're never doing it. They always talk about it. They're doing it for so long, but they never do it, you know. And it just seems it's never going to happen, you know. This prophecy is there, and it just seems like it's just been sitting there for so long, and it seems it's never going to happen. 
that they're never going to clone humans, they're never going to create these hybrids, and World War III is never going to happen, and prophecy is never going to happen, and it's just going to stay like this for thousands of years, you know. It really seems that way, man. It gets to me, because it seems like it's right at the door, like it's any minute, it could happen any minute like this, but then it seems like it's been happening for over 40, 50 years, and it's never going to happen. A thousand years from now, it'll still be the same. They'll still be not talking about human cloning. They'll still be, you know, not going into World War Three. I don't want World War Three to happen. You know, I mean, because uh, <clears throat> the first nuclear bomb is dropped, it's already too late. So many people have died, just like in uh, Japan, you know, in, in World War Two. So, um, you know, it doesn't have to take. It doesn't have to get there. It doesn't have to take nuclear bombs being dropped for Jesus to return. And it doesn't have to take everyone in the world knowing what human cloning is all about for Jesus to return. So it makes me wonder, what's going to be the final thing that brings Jesus return? I really don't know. And it gets to me, because uh, I, I want to know when it's going to happen, you know. I mean, I'm trying to bring Jesus to return, you know, as soon as possible to free the world, to save the world. You know, because this world is, is horrible. And, you know, I just want to go to heaven so much. I want to bring the whole world up to 100% uh, perfection. And it gets to me, because I want to know at least what month Jesus' return is going to be, or at least if it's going to be this year. I want to know, because for over, um, for over 20 years, I've been ready, you know, ever since 9-11, but mainly after I heard uh, Rayel in 2003, and then I heard the voice of God in 2006 say, The dust of the earth will rise. Ever since then, man, when I've been seeing the apparitions all the time in 2009, ever since then, it's been a whole process of 20 years. Ever since then, every second, man, I've been, like, hanging on to every second, like, is it going to be now? Is it going to be now? And, you know, every year I always say, okay, is it going to be this holiday? Is it going to be Easter? Is it going to be Christmas? And it just, I don't know. I don't know. It never happens. Prophecy never happens, you know, they never clone anything, they never create these hybrids, and World War Three never happens, you know, <clears throat> and it doesn't, it doesn't all have to happen for, um, it doesn't have to get that bad, you know, for Jesus to return, you know, I really hope Jesus could return before to prevent it all, and at least, you know, show apparitions to bring the world to get the world ready. You know, so it seems like God's waiting for these prophecies to be fulfilled. But it seems like, I don't know, man. They're just keeping it up under wraps for so long and that it never, ever happens. And it gets to me because I just want to know what's it going to be, what's it going to take, when is it. I don't need to know the hour or the second or the day. I just need to know, is it at this year at least? Is it, you know, one month, you know? Because I've been waiting so long. I've been waiting so long for Jesus to return that I have got seriously, um, <clears throat> what's the word, not just worn out, drained, but I've gotten not just frustrated, frustrated is not really the answer, because I don't want all the Christians to know that I'm angry um, that Jesus hasn't returned this whole time. I want everyone to know that I've gotten so uh, much in despair, you know, like, um, <clears throat> uh, it has really um, exhausted me, you know, and I just feel like you know, completely exhausted, you know, and um, not really tired of Jesus' return, because I never get tired of Jesus' return, like, I keep wanting Jesus to return, uh, never for one second have I said, oh no, well, you can just cancel your return, no. I'll just, uh, <clears throat> just keep um, going on day to day, but the way I see it is, you know, um, <clears throat> We, we need to drop our egos and say, yes, Lord, please return, please save this world. There's too much, too much stuff in this world that, that is just bad, you know. There's too much suffering, crime. The, the world is a mess, you know. And um, uh, why should we be clinging on to a doomed world when the kingdom of heaven is calling, you know. I mean, I'm, I'm tired of this world being so horrible. We could crash and die at any minute. We could get a, a shooting and get shot at any minute from these uh, uh, crazy uh, mass shooters everywhere, you know? And it's just not right. The people getting blown up every day in the Middle East and all this crime and people stealing and killing and, you know, the diseases. And, oh, 
me, my God, the, the greed, the poverty, everything, the whole nine yards, the drugs, everything. This world is messed up, you know? And um, so it just really gets to me, you know? Because this world is horrible, and heaven is so perfect, and it seems like, you know, um, just drop the world like uh, Eminem said in that song, you know, and, and reach out to heaven, you know? So, uh, next story, Trump, um, says he's willing to walk away on North Korea talks. If North Korea disrespects Trump and if they, um, if they try to keep, um, <clears throat> lying and saying that, that they're gonna they agree to denuclearize when they still keep doing it, basically Trump is saying that, um, He's not willing to let North Korea pull his chain, which I agree. I think North Korea is just uh, pulling our strings like puppets, you know. And I like Trump because he's putting his foot down and he's saying, Look, North Korea, you're not going to pull our strings like puppets. You know? Minnesota prosecutor to announce that Prince's death will lead to charges. So all this time we thought uh, Prince accidentally committed suicide. Now they're saying that uh, certain people around him could have gave him the pharmaceuticals. Now, these weren't illegal drugs. These were pharmaceutical. Uh, uh, overdose of opioid fentanyl in one of his medications. So someone could have killed him. Weird, just like uh, Conrad Murray probably did kill Michael Jackson, you know, because he was a doctor that was supposed to take care of him, and yet he uh, <clears throat> let all that happen. You know, and they they slapped Conrad Murray's hands, and they only gave him a year sentence, and that's it. You know, he got away with murder, uh, killing one of the most famous people in the world, and it's not right. And God sees all these atrocities, the abominations going on, on people getting away with murder. And, you know, these evil people, um, they need to be punished, they need to be thrown into hell. Babies now allowed on the U.S. Senate floor following rare move to change rules. <coughs> and I predict uh, women are going to start having their babies everywhere, even at work. Everywhere. Even at colleges, schools. Uh, women are going to start having their babies in every single place. Black Panther comes to Saudi Arabia as movie theater ban ends. Can you believe Saudi Arabia has had a ban on movie theaters for so long? And last story, MTV is bringing back your MTV raps. Now, MTV needs to give more, more shows for dance music. Me, personally, I like dance music more than rap. I don't like gangster rap music. Now, Tupac and Biggie, they had songs that are very spiritual. You know, so I, I like that, the religious songs, you know. I don't like the hardcore rap we're talking about immorality and drugs and crime and this and that. No, I don't like that. Rap. I like the hip-hop, you know, the party rap, the stuff that old-school hip-hop was created on, the Founding Fathers, you know, African Bambada, um, Cool Herc, you know, Grandmaster Flash and all them, you know, Soul Sonic Force, all of them, you know. They really um, started the party movement, the party rap music, and that's what hip, that's what rap needs to come back to is that party element of hip hop, you know. <clears throat> so now we'll go ahead and get into the topic of the day. I know it seemed like talking about um, Jesus' return was almost the second topic, um, <clears throat> but it really gets to me, you know. It really gets to me, because I am very passionate of Jesus' return, you know? There is so much going on in the world. Um, we are not safe at all. We are living in hell. Now, I don't mean to sound pessimistic when I say that, but we are living in hell. And I don't mean this as an attack at God or anything. I'm like saying, oh, how come you allowed it all? Um, <clears throat> you know, the way I see it is... Um, the situations we are in is because of environments um, that we are in. You know, it's it's bad when uh, children are born in the ghetto, when they're born in with drugs and crime flowing around everywhere. Then it's bad when children are born with silver spoons and then they're, 
they're um, <clears throat> they become the biggest uh, conceited people in the world as children, you know, and they become so conceited that um, they they um, basically despise everyone and, and um, they spit on everyone, not literally, but um, uh, metaphorically, you know, <clears throat> and they see everyone else as trash compared to them, you know, a second rate. Not even second rate, you know, the worst rate citizens, and that's not right. So, you have these environments people are born in. And you know, people are born in the Middle East, and they're growing up with all this terrorism around. Or they grow up in Mexico with all this uh, poverty. It's as bad as a lot of poverty in America as well. People get the stereotype that, oh, America is the richest country, so... You know, it's it's so great here. It's so great in America. It's not really that great. You know, it's bad everywhere. There's no perfect country. There's no perfect city. There's no shiny golden utopia out there. The only shiny golden utopia is up there in heaven, man. You know, <clears throat> and that's what gets to me. Because I see so much horrible stuff in the world day in, day out. All these mass shooters everywhere. All these, um, <clears throat> you know... All this crime, the drugs, you know, you want to go to a party and then there's all these drugs flowing around everywhere. People fighting at parties, people getting shot, stabbed, and killed at parties. You know, and it just ruins the mood, man. It just really kills the vibe, you know, and it just makes it very depressing when you can't even go to a, a party anymore. You can't even go to a house party anymore without um, people fighting and sh stabbing and shooting, killing each other over stupid stuff about trying to mack this uh, person's boyfriend or girlfriend or you know this person owes this person money so they want to kill him or you know <clears throat> someone spills a, 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 a beer on their shirt so they shoot and kill him you know stupid stuff people fight over the stupidest of things can you believe it and I wish it wasn't like this you know a lot of house parties people are are drunk and then they pulling out and they crash into someone's car. That's another reason why people will kill each other. You know? They want to rob the DJ, you know? Because uh, the DJ has all this expensive equipment. That's why I stopped mobile DJing. Because I got tired of having to uh, uh, put up with a lot of thieves. I had a lot of people following me uh, when I used to mobile DJ. They were following me at night and they would make threats to me. Like they like would whisper like loud to where they let me hear on purpose, and they say, oh, let's rob this fool, let's beat him up, and this and that, and they're all laughing, you know, and I just got tired of all that, you know, I got tired of all that negative stuff of people just, uh, the haters, you know, and, and, um, supposedly just joking, it's all a joke to them, saying, you know, they're gonna beat me up and rob all my stuff, ain't nothing funny about that, and God sees everything going on, that's why I quit mobile DJing, it was, you know, you're carrying $5,000 worth of equipment, you know, and it's just, it's not worth it, you know. Just for a, a few measly bucks, you know, $50 a night, $100 a night, and then at the end of the night, they want to complain for everything, and they don't want to pay you the whole thing, even though you try to sign out a contract, and if you don't make it there on time, they sue you. So much stuff you have to put up with, especially a wedding and this and that. I got tired of it. There's a lot of, um, people think, oh, being a, a, a mobile DJ is so nice. You just go and just just play music and they give you free food and it's just have a good old time it's not like that there's so much uh, negative stuff that, that it just is too much madness you have to put up with you know and I'm happy I stopped mobile DJ nothing would ever make me <laughs> um, mobile DJ again I do want to DJ at clubs and it's crazy because like performing my music what if the same stuff happens what if the club's equipment mess up and everyone boos me and think that I'm the one that messed up here? You know? What if um, you, you touch a certain uh, musical uh, equipment, like a CD player, and it shocks you? You hear people, um, stuff like this happen all the time. They grab a microphone, they get electrocuted. Well, you need to wear gloves for the microphone now. Uh, they, all kinds of things. You can get electrocuted from all kinds of things with DJ systems. Okay, so if you take your music and records or laptop, they try to steal that, you know? And it's just a lot of stuff you got to put up with, you know? I mean, yeah, DJing um, uh, at clubs is way better because you don't have to bring $5,000 worth of equipment. You get laptops for 50 bucks nowadays, 100 bucks. 
that's nothing compared to five thousand dollars worth of equipment you know let alone they try to steal your car as well you know so I just I got tired of that mobile DJing um, is, is horrible but club DJing is better you know and you can even make even way more money club DJing than mobile DJing if you get big enough you know you go on tour and everything you know so talking about back to the topic of the day um, <clears throat> Uh, back to the topic of the day here. Uh, there was a, a couple of other things I wanted to talk about, uh, but I forgot what, what it was here. Um, it was uh, just basically about stuff I'm going through, you know? Like, that's why, you know, I hate this world. It's horrible. Jesus said this world's not our home. This world is not for us. I hate to say, but this world belongs to the devil. This is the devil's world, you know? Our home is in heaven, you know, and the devil has such a grip, a hold on this planet. The devil has a chokehold on this planet, you know, and, um, <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> a lot of people tell me that there's more good in the world than bad. Um, yeah, there may be more good people, but you know what? Uh, good people fall circumstance to sin and crime and drugs and they fall to the devil. So they may be good. They may say they're Christian, but they're not really Christian. There's too many gangsters in the world. You know, it's a sickness. People uh, are gangsters in the world, you know. They always have a chip on their shoulder. They're always angry. They never smile. Then you have the goss, the heavy metal uh, people who are satanic worshippers. You know, um, it's just bad, you know. Um, you got the Marilyn Manson... Um, uh, worshippers on one side, and then uh, who can I say that's one of the worst gangster rap musicians? Because I lo I like um, like I was saying, Tupac had some uh, religious music, even Biggie, you know. Um, but if I could say the right off the bat, one of the worst uh, rappers out there, I don't know, um, uh, 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 Lil Xanax, I believe he passed away. No, he didn't. That was Lil Pete uh, died of uh, overdose. Uh, cough syrup and all that coding stuff, you know, <clears throat> lean they call it. It's, it's so stupid, you know. <clears throat> um, I, I have to say one of the main rappers I don't like is Lil Xanax. Because of his name, but I heard he's changing his name now, so. Uh, I can't really think right off the bat who a, a, a worse rapper out there would be, you know. Um, but I know, like, Heavy Metal, the first name comes to mind is Marilyn Manson because he's all Antichrist superstar. And he's already, like, uh, 80 years old thinking he could still get up on stage, you know? Um, you know? Just people completely whacked out of their minds. You know? and it's not bad. So now we'll go ahead and um, talk about um, <clears throat> the awesome and interesting um, things I saw here. See, the reason I was talking a little bit today about how horrible this world is is because there wasn't enough time to fill up to talk about uh, the things, uh, these pictures here, because it's only like, like three pictures, you know? And after that, you really don't have anything else to talk about. Just more like other examples. Um, there's Gravity Hill. Uh, it's big in here in El Paso, Texas. But you put powder on a car. I forgot where. Somewhere in downtown by the west side I don't know where somewhere around there. lower valley maybe I don't know and they said um, that you're on a hill right and you have the car like this here's the hill here's the car uh, that it starts pushing your car upwards when your car's supposed to go downwards and you have it in neutral and in neutral it's supposed to coast little by little down but if you're at a certain area it stays for a little bit uh, the the leveling it like stops from going down and the neutral stays at a certain part and they say that uh, the urban legend that, uh, that uh, ghosts push your car up a little bit and you start seeing handprints and I've heard you, that there's even handprints on children like um, children's handprints on the car when you put baby powder on and you see the uh, children's handprints on the car now, I've never seen it for uh, my own eyes. It's an urban legend. A lot of people talk about it. But I'm willing to believe it after all the stuff I've seen. I've even seen handprints on, on my car, my mom's car, you know. So, <coughs> <coughs> I 
uh, you know, I believe it because I've seen it uh, on my car, my mom's car, but I haven't seen it like there in Gravity Hill. You know, and this is really the only main um, thing I can relate to um, these uh, pictures here is uh, Gravity Hill, the ghost pushing. And they're saying that supposedly children died in a railroad track and that that's why you see the kids' handprints uh, on the car when you put the baby powder on. So I've never seen it. I like to um, investigate it. Uh, so this right here are the words TV. The words TV on the mirror in the restroom that I saw when it was fogged one time. And I've been seeing this for over six, seven years. Now I know it's kind of hard to see, but you could on how there's areas around it that um, isn't opaque as it is in the center. So it's clearly forming some kind of V. Now the other one to the side is like a sideways T. Like it's like hanging to the side there. And I drew it out in a blue line to make it stand out. So the second one's a W. Check this out. It's a W. I don't know what it means. West side or world. But there's a W here. You could clearly see in the blue lines that there is some kind of W shape. Look at the bottom, you see the lines forming the W. And now this one here. These are the handprints of the ch children's handprints on the towel in my restroom. Now you see one finger, two finger, three finger. You can barely see the pinky there. The pinky right in the center. Pinky's right in the center. And the thumb is over here to the center now. You see the thumb right there. So the next picture shows my hand next to it and it shows the size on you see the size of my hand here and you see the size of this other one is definitely way smaller. Now you could tell that my palm right here is lining up exactly to where it shows right there. If you look carefully you can see the bottom of the palm right here in the center. The center of the screen. I'll zoom all the way in right there. That's the palm line. That's the palm line right here. That's the palm line. So when I bring it back out, you see the palm line. So you see that handprint is a child size handprint. And mine is like, you know, bigger than that size. So isn't that interesting? Now sometimes I see a regular size handprint, but I often see the child size handprint a lot. So I don't know what it means. Is there like some kind of meaning to it? I really don't know. But the way I see the words TV, I think it means starting this show. Um, <clears throat> and hopefully this show is bringing Jesus' return. I believe it is. Um, definitely starting to see more apparitions coming out because of this show so very exciting stuff and the uh, W I don't know what that means West Side or World are the only two words I could think of here so it's basically saying my TV show which is on YouTube is going out to the world for Jesus return so we'll go and fit in a couple of EVPs here and we'll call it a night isn't that fascinating the child size handprints on the towel. Now, um, people could say, "Oh, I'm just uh, faking it, and that I drew it on the on the towel, and I formed it, and all that." You know, <clears throat> people, the uh, the haters could say it's fake. Like Justin uh, Timberlake's new star says, hey, uh, he says haters gonna say it's fake. So real. You know, so haters could say that it's fake all they want, but I know it is real. I never fake anything with Rise of Lances. I mean, if I were to faking stuff, you'd be seeing uh, UFOs that I've been seeing every single day. And they look so dramatic, like, oh my god, doing all the CGI, Photoshop, and all that. You know, it's rare when I see UFOs in my backyard. And as a UFO summoner, we can summon them. 
but it's not every day I wish it would, you know? So I've been waiting so long for UFOs to appear as well. And my theory is UFOs are apparitions. Um, demons may try to show their stuff, but God shows apparitions as well. So now we'll go ahead and do a couple of EVPs here. Okay, let's see. Hmm, tired all day, every day. Yeah. Okay, what times are rough uh, for us? You still have to freak out or something like this. I don't know what you're saying. Times are rough for you and us. And it says, you still have to freak out. <laughs> I really don't know what that means here. Times are so rough it makes us freak out. Okay, and this phone got the words. Um, monthly forge, oxalate, manneredness, and match. So every month we forge something of oxalate. That means to like oxalate to change. And manneredness means to be calm and match. So very strange. And we'll go and do <laughs> okay, it's saying, don't waste your ideas while you develop color. Don't waste my ideas while I develop color. So is it saying, <clears throat> don't waste my time? I don't know. You know, because I never have any time. It's just work, show, sleep. That's all it is all day, every day. I work in sales. And if I really want to bank, 
Like, I really got to work every day, man. You know? So, I don't know this while you develop color. What? This one has, uh, why well, I do plan on making shirts. I think that's what it's talking about. e -packed, I Am The Earth, Singer Rip, Furniture, Elimination, Clothes, Naturalist, Chancellor, Notre, Moon. Um, so we have the words, um, e -pack. I don't know what that means. Uh, I Am The Earth, Singer Rip, Furniture, elimination, clothes, naturalist, chancellor, not really moved. So, what is it trying to say here? Something about furniture and elimination. Well, it's weird how we see a lot of furniture stores going out of business. And chancellor, those are like the people in government. And uh, a north of the moon. A naturalist? Uh, I don't know what to make of this. I think we have time for one more. And yeah, we're going to do one more. <coughs> <coughs> one more. Uno mas. Okay, so this one's saying, deal with your issues quickly. You will get for looking for them. Deal with your issues quickly. You will get for looking for them. I don't know what that means. And this phone has the words, cake whoop editorially plied. Uh, so I don't know what these two mean here. Cake group editor applied and dealing with my issues quickly. Huh. Cake group editor applied. Well, cake and editorly means like cooking, a cooking show or something. I don't know, and applied. I don't know what to make of this here. Hopefully, I can find meaning to this. Hopefully, I can receive powerful predictions of prophecy that I've received before. So we'll go ahead and end it there. Please like, share, and subscribe. Please tell everyone you know to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you. God bless. Good night. Jesus is returning. Hallelujah. Believe. Believe that Jesus is returning, and he will. Hallelujah. Uh, pray to God every day and night to see uh, Jesus and God in the clouds and I guarantee you, you will and you'll see dreams of Jesus and God of heaven and you'll even hear him speak to you if you really want to if you really ask, I guarantee you you will hear God speak to you like he spoke to me when he said the dust of the earth will rise that was in 2011 I believe so we'll go ahead and end it there. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you. God bless. Good night. Jesus is returning.